Well, welcome. Uh, BJ, you. very excited to get to chat with you again. We jump right into things here. We don't mess around. So welcome to uh, OPN's Ask an Angel. And today we're with uh, BJ Thomas. And we're excited to chat with you because we were just on a panel not too long ago. And we got to do a, a really good deep dive and learn a lot more about yourself. So I'm excited to kind of explore, well, a lot of different angles. But uh, the best way for us to start is if you can give us a bit of your background. So where you've come from, all the great things you've been up to and the new things that you're, you're kind of working on. And then one thing about you that nobody will know. Okay, that's, um, that's a lot that I have to think about. But anyway, uh, some of it, uh, nobody would know it'd be a tough one, but let me, let me just start with the other ones, the simpler ones. Um, my, my name is Vijay Thomas. Uh, I uh, you know, grew up in, in India. I was born and brought up in India. I, I lived in different parts of India. I, I you know, started my career there. I, I, uh, um, I have a mechanical engineering degree. Uh, I have an MBA in finance and uh, I ended up in the IT industry. Um, you know, put all of it together. Uh, you know, I, I am a strong believer in serendipity. Uh, you know, you, you let life take you to places. And in most cases, it is, better than where you were and and you know i i um, you know for whatever uh, you know i i'm not a um, you know big planner i don't think i know what's going to happen uh, you know two years from now five years from now i don't even know what's going to happen you know 30 days from now or, or you know tomorrow so i think there's a little bit of serendipity that i firmly believe in and i've let life take me to places and um, it, it's, it's actually been not too bad so, you know, I started as a mechanical engineer, did some MBA. Um, I should have been in, uh, on, 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 in, in, in finance. People said, you're good at it. Um, and this was the end of the late 90s. There was the whole, you know, uh, you know, finance was not doing very well. So I didn't get a finance job. But, you know, the Indian, and, and I did my MBA in India. So the Indian IT industry was doing well, but thanks to Y2K, Along came an, an, an IT company that said, hey, you want to join this thing? And I said, okay, what's on offer? You could possibly travel the world. You can do a lot of things. We got projects. All I said, hey, fantastic, sign me up. And that's, that's how I went in there. And uh, you know, people always ask you, how do I land up in Canada? That same IT company that joined, sent me to, to Boston. This was, this was um, you know, uh, 2001 or so. Uh, at that time, you know, I was on an L1 visa. The spouse couldn't work. In, in Boston. So, you know, uh, this was just, I think, um, George Bush had just took, taken over. Um, it, was, it was kind of, you know, a different time of the world. Um, it, it, we, we, uh, my wife and I had not uh, married as then, but I told her, hey, um, you know, you want to come to the US? She said, I'm not going to come if I cannot work. Um, and I'm like, okay, this is a big problem. So I went to visit a friend in Montreal, which was only four hours away from Boston. And the guy says, okay, you know what? Um, are you interested in Canada? I said, okay. I told him, asked him only one question. Can the spouse work on a work permit in Canada? And he said, yes. I said, okay, send me and sign me up. So I went to, uh, the co company was Bombardier. I went to the, for an interview to Bombardier. Um, the next day, they, they hired me and said, okay, you can join tomorrow. I said, no, 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 I can't join tomorrow. You got to do some paperwork and all that stuff. I, I go back to India, we get married. They send the paperwork. I come back to Montreal um, and, and uh, you know, I started working in Montreal. My wife was in marketing. Now she can work, she can officially work, right? She's got the paper that allows her to work, but she's in marketing and in, in Montreal, did, little did we know that if you want to do marketing in Montreal, you need to know French. Mm. So she didn't get a job. So we we're like, okay, you know, now what do we do? So we, you know, we, she applies for some company, she gets a job in, in, in Toronto. So we. We just come to Toronto and, uh, you know, no regrets. I've been in Toronto since and, and uh, you know, I then started a, um, a software. I was working for a software company and this is a, I'll just add this in. I don't know how much time you have. This was a company that was out of Paris, France, and I was their head of operations in Toronto. And I went to India once and, and I said, okay, you know what, um, I'll come back. And, and this was, I think, Christmas and I came back in, in January. And, and I tried to reach the company, the vice president I reported to, and I was the only guy in, in Toronto. And I, and I reached out to him and said, you know, hey, what's happening? You know, and then it, I only got his voicemail, said, you know, 
the company shut down. So nobody's there. I tried calling a couple of people, but I started, I, I, I was still being paid. So I said, okay, everything seems to be okay, but I can't reach anybody. And finally, remember there was a HR guy in Quebec City. I call his HR guy and tell him, hey, you know what, what's happening? I can't reach anybody in the company. He says, you don't, you don't know? And I said, I don't know what. He said, the company sold. And he said, there's only two people in Canada left. That's you and me. And, and, he, and he's saying, the HR guy said, but I'm, I also put in my papers and I'm quitting. So I said, okay, this is, this is not good news. What do you mean? Only you and I in the company. And, and he said, don't you read email? I said, no, they're all in French, so I don't read them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, was, it was quite funny. So, you know, and, and, and the previous year, we had one rookie of the year from Canada Dealer News. So it, we've done very well. So the guys in Paris were kind of saying, you know, do well, you're doing well. And I said, okay, do they have any plans? Do they have any budgets for doing this? They said, no, no, they want you to build this company by yourself, ground up. Then, then I said, if I'm going to do this myself, I might do it on my own. Only thing that I, I am not going to get is my salary. Okay, because they were not really, there was no budget. There was no growth equity. There was nothing, there was nothing in there. So I said, you know what, I'm quitting as well. So uh, the HR guy said, you know what, before you quit, here's my resignation as well. <laughs> so we both quit and, and that was it. So I went on on my own, totally jumped into the in the pool of water, not knowing how it's hot or cold or whatever. I, I always wanted to do something. So that was 2003, come to you know 2021. So the company I started in 2003 was Tangentia. We're now a global you know, IT consulting company. We operate in, in, um, in primarily US, Canada, and India. Uh, and we do automation, uh, B2B, EDI, and digital. So those are core, core areas. We're around 150 to 200 people worldwide. And we all started from a one bedroom condominium at Bayview and Shepherd. So uh, I'm one of those stay hungry, stay foolish kind of guys. And as we go along, um, you know, I've, I've invested a little bit in, you know, as we go along, somebody came by and said, you know, do you want to invest in a startup? And I'm a sucker for entrepreneurship and angel investing. You don't need a lot of money to start off with. And, and I think I was mentioning that on that, on that panel, I actually started investing in India because the Canadian dollar, although you think, uh, you know, especially when I came to Canada, it was almost $54, 54 cents to the US dollar. But, you know, it was still goes a long way in India. It doesn't go as much in some other places, but it goes a long way in India. So, uh, you know, that's where I started doing a lot of my angel investing. Um, you know, you hit one or two out of the park uh, and then, you know, you build some street cred, you know how this thing works. Um, and that's come to maybe a couple of three years back. I kind of started a venture capital private equity kind of um, you know arm of our business it's not arm of it, it's a separate company it's got tangential ventures um, and we've got some investments now uh, specifically in the india canada corridor so that's the area that we we kind of operate in and um, you know it is it is it's it's not been bad so so now i've got two real businesses one is tangential which is our original business and we've got tangential ventures and, um, and and you know i'm now learning more about venture investing. It was more, uh, you know, gut feel, more seat of the pants, more, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, almost like a startup, but almost like a, you know, not with not knowing anything, but just standing there for them, you know, putting in some money, helping them, uh, you know, grow. Uh, now I'm, 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 I'm figuring out there is a whole science to this. Okay. There is a science to how some of this is being done. So, I'm learning how some of that is being done, and 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 you know one of those people that I I want to uh, you know learn something from is going to be you as well. So after we've done this, you know, please uh, uh, you know be ready for 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 me asking you some questions maybe out of this show. But I I want to learn more as well of how this is done by the professionals. I'm one of those guys that kind of just got into this without knowing much, just, just basic fundamentals, which is, which is, you know, kind of not, not been bad, but you know, we could have done some things a little differently, I guess, on, on hindsight, but that is it, uh, Jeffrey. I know I might have taken longer than you probably wanted, but uh, that is, that, that covers everything. No, that was perfect. Oh man. Keep talking. You got high <laughs> energy. I love it. Uh, so one thing about you that no one would know, I'm sure you've had some Glimpses in there that you want to share? I, I think I, I people think, you know, 
I, I do believe, um, you know, uh, sometimes some of these things, you know, I, I, people do think you're, you know, I, I sometimes, you know, people think you're very confident and, you know, you, you do it. I, I am a glass half full guy. But every time I do something, I am quite scared. I'm quite afraid that it might actually fail. Now, there's something I don't tell people, but I, I, do, I do think, and, and sometimes I, I am prepared for that. I'm, what's the worst case? All these things is going to blow off, right? So the, I, I do have a, a worst case. People have a, like a happy place. I have a very sad place. Uh, you know, what is the sad place for me? I have a sad place. People have a happy place. I must say, I, I have a sad place. I've not told this to anybody. And uh, so this, this uh, I guess, this sad place, is it more of a reflection space where you're going in and just kind of figuring out, hey, I just did all these things. And then you're kind of trying to coach yourself through, don't worry, you did the right thing. This is good. No, I'm also like, no, I'm just saying, like, I'm sometimes saying, worry. This is, this can all go very bad, right? And I'm like, okay. Um, so it is kind of, I don't know, I don't know, I don't think there is a, a there's any, you know, science to this, but I'm actually saying, sometimes telling myself, you got to worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you totally do. It's uh, and I kind of will align with you on this. Is that uh, I don't have a, a sad place, but uh, what I what I will think is that it's it's um, it's a strategy to keep yourself motivated and driven. Uh -huh. And uh, we find our own mechanisms. And for myself, I always say that I'm always living on the brink of destruction uh -huh. because if I'm not, I don't have the drive to keep moving forward. So I'm always having to put myself into a position of panic that mm -hmm. I have to make a call. And if I'm not fixing today's problem, tomorrow it's going to drive me and fail me. So I have to always be thinking, what am I fixing today so that I'm better tomorrow? And every day I have to live that way because if I don't, then I find that we just get too easy going on our, on our um, business, our morals, everything. And we don't really tackle or challenge anything. So we're not really moving forward. So you got to find a way to keep yourself motivated because you're a self-owner uh, business owner so unless you've got other people above you or advisors mentors and people that you're working for you got to have a way to drive yourself so you got to find those mechanisms yeah so maybe that is mine i there you go yep oh that's good and it, it's helpful really yeah. it is look where you've got yourself to today and, and like uh i think i saw in one of your videos uh you said hey if i can do this you can do this absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's awesome. And uh, very well put. So I, I kind of want to take a, a step back to kind of the experiences that you have, because I think experience really dictates kind of your future. Mm -hmm. And being an engineer, that means you're always mechanical, you're trying to figure out solutions. So you're already a solutionist, which is awesome. Being in the software world, even more incredible, uh, because you can understand how things are operating and moving, what takes uh, how software can be built to change and revolution revolutionize an industry or a product and, and all those great things. So when you jumped into um, Tangenia, mm -hmm. what did that turn into for you? What was the pivoting point where you started your own company and you started this massive consulting firm globally? Mm -hmm. how, how did you find that position going in as an entrepreneur? And what is what have you grown and changed over the years? Or have you stayed the same way? You know, like, you know, I've just dedicated, driven, driven, driven. Or have you pivoted yourself personally as an entrepreneur? And what kind of learnings do you have from that? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, again, I, I come from a very middle class Indian family where, uh, you know, growing up in India, especially in the 70s, 80s, 90s, was very, um, you know, uh, you've got to, you know, entrepreneurship was not meant for the middle classes, right? You, you went found a job, you, you, you did your stuff, you know, those, uh, there were people that, that had turned entrepreneur in, in a previous life or, uh, you know, previous generation, you know, there were people that, that did things a certain way, um, but nobody in my family, nobody even today, there's a probably, uh, and my, my mother keeps telling me this, she, she used to tell me this, like nobody's ever succeeded in our family with entrepreneurship, right? And so, so I had to actually go a little beyond some of those things. I had to break a lot of barriers. I had to break a lot of uh, taboos. I had to break uh, a bunch of things to do that. So in that sense, I think the early few days were were like, am I out of the woods? Is this really going to work, right? Um, you know, should I just apply for a job at IBM? I probably can make vice president easily, right? I mean, you know, you, you always look at the, the, the options possible, 
uh, I never, I never really, you know, pulled the trigger on it because I was so driven to doing something um, that. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it crossed the minds of, you know, uh, you know, my family sometimes looked at me and say, "Hey, you're working 18 hours a day for 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 the last 17 years, right? Uh, could you could you do something else, right? I mean, you could look at the other guys. They're playing golf. They're doing these things. You're 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 not. I mean, they're spending more time with the kids. They're doing things, whatever. I mean, there's there's always a, 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 the grass is always green on the other side. So I think somehow I was so driven that I never saw all of those things. I mean, it did come by, and I saw all of this. But I I always enjoyed what I did, and and so work was not work. So in that sense, have I really pivoted to having you know? Plateaued and 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 now have more golf time. I don't think so. Um, do I really think uh, you know? I'll get to that point where it might be. Uh, maybe I'm not so sure. But however, I do enjoy now the tangential ventures side of the business, where I don't get actively involved. Uh, maybe for some of the businesses where I'm involved in, I might be a little too actively involved for some of their their liking. But I'm still less actively involved that as I am in our main operating business, which is Tangentia, right? So I'm quite involved there. But we're we're getting more people, more um, you know, professionals in different parts of business. People came to me before and said, "Who's the CFO of your company?" I said, "You're looking at him." Who's the CMO of your company? Hey, you're looking at him. Who's the, uh, the you know chief revenue officer? Hey, you're looking at him. So <laughs> yeah, so so again. Um, when I looked at it from a pure, you know, business standpoint, each of those designations costs a lot of money. So at the end of the day, end of the year, when we actually do the the, the balance sheet and and the PNL, there's a lot of money that actually ends up staying in the company, which which, hey, I have found a way to to rationalize it. Not that I don't know about the benefits of a CFO, the benefits of a CRO, benefits of a CMO. I, I, I also know the benefits of not having those guys. And I'm willing to articulate that to somebody one day. It is a very difficult position to take, but I'm willing to take that position in any business school. I'll stand it up to scrutiny and I will show you that yes, it does mean somebody has got to work harder, but it is possible at the end of the day that you can do it. Now you do have to have the, the smarts, you should have the skills, you should also have the the, the, the ability to work that much harder, but if you can do it, it is possible. And I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm living proof that it's possible. Now, it's gone a little beyond that. So I have, you know, we've got a bunch of people that have come in and, and help up with some of that, but to a certain point, and that certain point is quite large, okay? And I'm saying, until you're $20 million in revenue, you really don't need any of these things. You, you, you know, and when somebody comes to me and shows me a plan, uh, for like a million dollars in revenue and they have a CRO, they have a CFO, they have a CMO. I'm like, what are you doing? So who's this one guy? Like, wh why do you need all these guys? Okay, so I think, I've, I've, you know, there's a point at which we need to, so I am getting to that point and I'm enjoying doing some of this company ones where we've got other, the key drivers are, are the people in the companies the people who have invested, who, who are, who are the, the, the key drivers in, in those investee companies of ours. So I, I'm, I'm quite enjoying that, that part of the, my, my role. EJ, I love it. Uh, very well said. Um, I'm sure that uh, we could compare notes, but I, I completely agree with you that I, I think a lot of the times, and startups do this a lot, is that um, they envision what they would look like when they're a big, large organization and try to bring too much of that at the lower levels and investors look at them, try to treat them like a large organization when they're in a startup phase. And a, a lot of those roles aren't needed. The, the roles of support, driving operations, growth, those are the things that are gonna really benefit the company and uh, part-time CFOs and- uh, Absolutely, uh, absolutely. No, I'm not saying you know, compliance right. is not required. I'm not saying take shortcuts, but there you go. Part-time yeah. CFOs, get people, you know, just pay for service. Don't have to take fixed costs as lean as possible. Agreed. Yeah, no, that's uh, very well said. So in this process of, of building up your company, um, what I really enjoyed about our conversations were that you started this venture firm, but not just that you started this venture firm, is that you started taking risks mm -hmm. and started investing in 
in companies in India and just seeing what happened. And uh, you had some pretty fascinating stories and some, uh, uh, some great things that came out of it. And, and you were saying, well, I'm no professional, but uh, you've done quite well in uh, lots of your investments. So uh, I, I think there was a lot of good learnings that would have come out of that. And, and like you said, you, you talk about uh, having companies be more lean. Is there other things that you learned from that investment standpoint that really have helped you in your own business because you started investing in early stage companies? Yes, uh, at, at, uh, you know, some of these companies that I invested in, um, you know, because I ran Tangentia in a very old school, um, you know, uh, uh, cash flow, uh, you know, uh, you know, not less burn, you know, what's your burn rate kind of thing, right? We never had a burn rate thing because we never raised money. Uh, Tangentia is 100% bootstrapped. Okay, Tangentia Ventures is 100% bootstrapped. Okay, so, so we've raised even the capital that we invest, we raise it bootstrapped. Okay, so, so, so philosophically, I'm a very old school, you know, traditional entrepreneur. Um, and then I look at some of the companies that we invested in. And what I learned from there, you know, not that I could take, but I, I also learned that, you know, they were the power of, you know, where, where you actually invest a lot of money, try to gain something. And there's a risk involved. Uh, where you go for absolute, you know, you go for, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Market share, you know, dominating market share, right? You know, I, I was, I was, um, you know, maybe not a, as much of a, a believer in, in, let's say, people like Facebook and, and you know, uh, all of these guys where they went and burnt a lot of money initially, but they went, they got dominant market share and now they're gushing cash. So, but... I still don't believe that everybody can do it. There's probably a few that can do that, but everybody in his uncle and his dog thinks that is the model for success. And I'm sorry to say, I'm not, I don't, I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. It, it is not going to work. However, what I tell most people that I invest in, I'm looking for companies. So I've coined this term called long-term agile disciplined growth. It says long-term disciplined agile growth. Sorry, it's the other way. Long-term disciplined agile growth. LDAG. Long-term disciplined agile growth. So long-term, first of all, you have a very long-term view. So when you have a long-term view, what is more important is the business plan, not the exit plan, right? If you go to Silicon Valley, the whole Silicon Valley view of things is how do we get to, you know, to maximization. How do we get this as quickly as possible? So what happens is the exit plan becomes your first thing. You first start with your exit plan. Okay, I'm going to create something. Who do I sell this to? Is your number one thing. Then, okay, now let's build a business that this guy's going to buy. I'm like, are you guys, you guys have this upside down. Okay, you know, and, and to do that, then they go around doing it and, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And, and most times it doesn't. However, with a long-term disciplined agile growth, you will make money in the traditional business sense. You will make net profits. You will have cash flow. You will do all that stuff. And then, you know, if you want to get growth capital, you bring those in, whatever. It's, it's a more, little more old fashioned way of doing it, but you will succeed. It, you might not hit a rocket ship, but you will. Now, I mean, so in a sense, maybe we're not investing in, in, in Facebooks. We're not investing in the next uh, big one, but if we're investing a bunch of different things from a probability standpoint, our probabilities of success are higher. Okay, we're not investing in a hundred companies and, and, you know, 98 of them go bust and two of them hit rocket ship. We're investing in 10, 20 companies of which 15 do well, five fail. It's a, it's a different ratio. Okay, so we're taking less risk, but the ones that are succeeding are succeeding. So it's, you know, and, and one or two of them might really do well. Okay, so it's a whole different take on, on angel investing, whole different take on, 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 on uh, and, and so it's philosophically we are different and we're only looking for companies that are looking at that as well. So we say no to a lot of companies. We say, no, you've got to go to somebody that has a different uh, way of looking at this. Um, somebody that can take you 
you know to from one round to another round to another round because they're they're going to teach you how to burn money i don't know how to burn money okay my whole plot i i i almost think it's a sin to burn money i'm like how can you even think of burning money this is stupid okay so so again if you're in the burn money thing we're not the vc for you okay we're we're absolutely not the vc for you we we almost uh, you know we we almost play pay homage to money we're like this is sacred we got to make it go as long as it can or as for as much as it can the most bang for our buck i, I think that that um, phrase might have been coined by peter russell that, okay uh, I, i don't know i don't know sorry I, which he's one the, he's, the, he's the comedian okay indian yeah, comedian, yeah. and That's he always right. talks about that yes okay says, there you go uh, He says Indian guys they like to find ways to save money not spend money and when Absolutely. they have a deal they'll tell you all about the deal and uh I, but I 100% agree Russell, with Russell Russell Peters Russell Peters yes Russell Peters yep I I said it backwards Peter yes. Russell yeah <laughs> Uh well I guess that's my joke for his joke um <laughs> but uh, what I what I like about this model that you're doing it's uh what it what I it comes down to the way it shapes is the you're kind of and correct me if i'm wrong here but what you're doing is you're taking a company that has really hyper focus mm-hmm. and you're saying you're going to go to market with this and you don't need a rocket ship build this mm-hmm. what you need to do is learn from your customers mm-hmm. grow your business mm-hmm. do it sustainably you mm-hmm. don't need a lot of uh, investment at the beginning you know take some of my money of mm-hmm. when we'll help you build slowly yes get into a position where you're getting that really good growth Mm-hmm. and then you'll just kind of in 5 years you're going to realize this is where my business is this is how mm-hmm. i'm doing mm-hmm. maybe you're doing 10 20 million you've really mm-hmm. done a great job mm-hmm. and then if you need hyper growth at that point because you've really figured it out mm-hmm. and honed in on what your skills are good at you've mm-hmm. built a nice solid team mm-hmm. then go raise some funds but at that point you're really far into the path and then you can take off and do the 10 20 30 40 and, million and at, 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 at that point you can also decide you know on on 20 million if you're making 5 million in in profits you know what uh, we can just stay there as well and make sure it is you know it doesn't yeah. it doesn't need to again philosophically you don't need to go to hyper growth why do you need to go to hyper growth if we put in the money we're we're going to get you know by the time in 5 years in most of our cases we actually get our money back yep okay and after which these things are gushing cash it's true I I learned this uh this line when uh I started my company my uh-huh. first company back um uh, 15 16 years ago uh my software company and uh it literally was what I just started mm-hmm. and uh, I had landed from 3 months of backpacking through Asia and I landed in the Dominican for a friend of mine's wedding and I met um his sister's um fiance and he mm-hmm. owned five mailbox companies or those mm-hmm. mailbox stores mm-hmm. and he said to me Jeff you won't know you're a, you're in business until you've been in business for 5 years mm-hmm. and i was like really mm-hmm. he goes you'll never know because you're going to pivot change alter and by the time you get to 5 years then you're going to realize that you're a company mm-hmm. and up until that point you have too many things to work through to learn what you're doing mm-hmm. so in your philosophy i think what it does is it protects the business it allows the business to figure out how to do something in a in an environment where they're not burning cash, they're not losing cash, mm-hmm. and they're hiring the right people to manage and grow mm-hmm. based on their scope of being able to manage multiple people. Yes, and I think absolutely. sometimes we see with startups is that as soon as they get cash, one they feel invincible. Mm-hmm. So they decide they need to hire 20 people mm-hmm. because it's first and new to them and they're mm-hmm. not really envisioning I've got 500,000 or I've got a million, who is the most optimal person I need to hire right now? Mhm. and who's going to help me move that line up and grow not who are the first 10 people i need to hire right now so that my payroll goes from 10,000 a month to 200,000 mm-hmm. now all of a sudden i'm uh, in danger of not being able to meet my numbers and a criteria so it, it is a different mindset and i Absolutely. appreciate that yeah and 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 jeffrey i think the 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 the, the vc industry because of their whole philosophy of fail fast they want people to burn money right they want people to burn money it is i think it, it they want to understand will this stand scrutiny or not and will it get new money it's a way of them you know uh, trying to weed out the you know the wheat from the chaff kind of thing 
so i think there is a method in the madness the reason they do it is a certain uh, thing but you know we are willing to take the long term they're not willing to l- look at it that long term they're like it doesn't work we're not putting any more money these guys are no good let's throw them out okay uh, we're not going to find go find some more money we'll get to you in the next round so they just playing the game right so 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 in a sense the onus is now on the on the entrepreneur to say i'm burned this and i'm still i i made it all work okay it's a very high risk um which i think you know if you really are on a rocket ship it helps but not everybody is on a rocket ship right not everybody is on a rocket ship everybody thinks they're on a rocket ship okay everybody you know thinks or wants to be on a rocket ship and and i think that's a problem so but these some of these are good businesses that if they only had to think of themselves as a normal stand alone business that we only want to get to 20 million or 30 million or 50 million they would have probably made it yeah but, but they've been drinking the school aid that they can be the next facebook and and guess what they get they get um, you know you know they get dropped by the roadside mm. because they just can't make it they're they're they, they just, can't control their burn they can't, they can't control, control the that right and and then it's they're too much in the hole by then to to do anything else yeah so how do you find where, in, yeah how do you find so, environmental issues support this like covid mm. and other things um with the companies that you invest in how did you find covid did it affect in your businesses did you find that you know what really we were already pretty strong on the books so covid was actually just another way for us to pick up and just find another way to be better I think you know again I sometimes am embarrassed by this because I look around and some people have not done as well um but you know most again I've been doing a lot of things very differently from what m- management business school books would tell you or conventional well, wisdom sure. would yeah. tell you for for tangential for a company our size we were quite diversified in fact you know people came to a lot of them you know they always keep sending us notes you know uh, because we were on profit 500 fastest growing companies in canada six years in a row okay it's it's not easy to be on that list for six years in a row but we did it so we had sustained high high rates of growth um but you know when people came to us and said okay we want to buy you okay for, for a few it was it was quite a nice feeling when when in some of them a bigger company said we want to buy you and i'm like okay fantastic like people want to buy us i i had a few conversations with them and then they realize okay this is a very complicated business you know it's not a simple business we we bought this i don't think we can run it <laughs> i said okay hey i never said this was simple you said you want to buy us yeah okay so but that's what diversification does that's what diversification does so for a long time i was like maybe i've got this wrong maybe you know what maybe these guys are right until covid hits and and diversification came in handy you know some things went down some things went up and and believe it or not 2020 was one of our best years ever okay it's the best years ever so it it really did help um and and so i tell people you know you've got to have your own philosophy don't follow everybody else and and you know you have to have the courage of conviction that you're right i mean in, you know you you're right i mean you until you're proven wrong but everything there's no fundamental right and wrong right there's there's a lot of things that work in some places sometimes don't work so i think we were able to just we were able to pivot and again i went to my sad place or i won't call it my panic place now as you you know after this conversation i think sad place sounds a little not to you know doesn't it sounds sad it's too mopey yeah i yeah, i think lucky, you're lucky. Good so with, uh... let's say panic Yeah, okay, your so panic room. Yeah, my panic room. So I, I go and I went to my panic room in something middle of March. Uh, you know, I said, "Oh my God, this could be the end of the world." Uh, you know, this is so bad. What do we do? And then I started really pushing a lot of things, right? And 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 you know, so really putting effort on a bunch of things, and and, and some of them paid off. Rather than panic and 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 go back into the cocoon, we actually started pushing. We started selling. We started doing a lot of other things, and I think a lot of that did come in handy. Oh that's good. And I think with this philosophy it also it, one I think you mentioned earlier it creates a lot more work for you generally. Yes. Because you are doing different things which means it's different focuses um and we're very similar in that aspect. 
Mm -hmm. uh, even from investing, we invest in different verticals, but we're trying to trim those down a bit to where we can put a focus to it a lot better. Uh, but we still have to talk with everybody because we're bringing everybody into the funnel to help them get funding. And, um, and I, I find that the focus really does allow you to hone in on where you're going. Yes. And I think you mentioned that when you are trying to go somewhere, and especially this works very well for a startup, in, especially in your model for investing, is that when you're honing in that direction and you're really hyper-focused on it, there's a really good opportunity uh, for you and your team to align and know the direction you're going. So how important do you find, and even when you're talking to your startups, that you really get them to hone in on their core business of understanding and use that as their mechanism to drive forward? Absolutely. So again, a lot of these businesses that we, we work on, we try to make them, you know, like a single line business. Um, you know, some of the stuff that we did, again, it was very long term. Okay. Tangentia took 18 years. We are 17, 18 years, right? I mean, uh, you know, again, this is one of the learnings. Uh, we're not that long a time window as well. So in five years, we've got to get somewhere. So you really can't do too many things. And I think, as I said, you know, I, I had some limitations as well in understanding. So now, you know, I didn't really know first generation entrepreneur, um, you know, no mentor, new country, no old, you know, old boy network, nothing, right? Total had to do this, uh, you know, uh, you know, ground up. So you are fighting a lot of battles, but I think some of those things, uh, you know, have kind of landed to a point where now I think I can help some of these businesses we invest in you know, not go through some of those battles, right? They don't really have to go through some of those things. You know, we could filter those things, help them filter those and, um, you know, go really hammer and tongs on, on one or two aspects of the business, you know, have some diversification, but that, that diversification could be in customers. You know, diversification again is key. I, I love diversification, but it doesn't have to be different businesses. Hmm. You know, like, you know, we're, we're invested in a, um, in a, PPE manufacturing, right? Uh, so it came out of nowhere and we invested. Now we're out of nowhere. We're probably among the largest, um, you know, in the top three, at least uh, hospital gown manufacturers in Canada. Okay. Make in Canada, PPE, um, you know, and we started out of nowhere. And, 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 you know, so, so we were able to do that. Um, as part of that thing, we also got access to a laundry network. Okay, in, in Canada, believe it or not, uh, you know, uh, and, we, we, and, and I looked at it and said, there is innovation possible in even old businesses, you know, traditional businesses, and, um, and you bring technology, and there's some exciting things that might happen, and we'll, we'll you stay tuned, um, you know, there is a lot of innovation possible in a lot of industries, and a lot of these are ripe for consolidation, ripe for growth, right for you know some player to come in so there's a bunch of these things that that we've looked at and we've, we we think there is there's a lot of opportunity there i love it uh so kind of in this journey that you've been on with and again a lot of this goes back to how in the philosophies on the investment side uh, are there certain industries that you've been focusing on investing and do you look at these investments as potential opportunities to buy them and move them into your business to keep that business moving forward. And I'm just saying, I'm not saying that that's your philosophy, but hey, it sounds kind of like it could work quite well. It, it could, it could, yes. I mean, again, uh, I probably didn't say this, but at some point, I, I, I'm i a big Berkshire Hathaway believer. I mean, and you know, believe it or not, Berkshire Hathaway, their model is a fantastic model. In fact, even Alphabet um, in Google, they stole the holding company model from Berkshire. Okay, so Berkshire, um, you know, in Omaha have, have an office uh, and then their the, the real uh, main office is only 14 and a half people. And it's 14 and a half because one guy only works half, half, a, a, a half the day, right? So, so, you know, so 14 and a half people control a conglomerate of like 300 or 400 billion. How do they do that? Right, so it's something that you know it's always been something that that has been in the back of my mind. Like, how do you build a structure where you you can have a very lean top end management team that that can run multiple businesses in disparate different areas? You got to find that connecting the thread that connects all of it together. 
you need to find a governance model that puts all of it together. So it does, you know, we're not there as yet, um, but it is something that, that does cross my mind. It's something that I would like to see happen. You know, if I can do it or not is a different thing, but definitely something that we would aspire to do, um, you know, put in place some kind of a model like that, a very lean, you know, team at the top uh, and, and then leave the operating companies to have their own freedom and, uh, you know, provide some kind of guidance and, you know, basically investment smarts in terms of where should the money go, right? Where should, where, where should the heat map be on this business, right? You know, from a, you know, uh, you know, uh, money allocation, um, you know, uh, uh, focus allocation, as well as, you know, just, just a strategic focus. Well, VJ, I, I love it because you've taken your philosophy, you've really honed in on it, you've grown your business, you've spent 18 years mastering this, you're influencing a lot of younger startups, you're investing in them, you've got a big picture view, and uh, you're giving them a different form of training than the, the old school VC angel look on businesses. I think it's awesome. So congrats, it's beautiful. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of, and I love learning about it. So it's awesome. And, and it's a great, uh, great way to look at companies. We're gonna switch just quickly into the rapid fire questions okay. um, because there's uh, a lot of things I think we'll pull out of there that are gonna, again, uh, really support kind of what you're doing today. So um, I guess that you kind of touched on it a little bit on the first question, but what got you started and in, interested in investing in startups? They're high risk. Serendipity. I've, I've always been, but you know, I've always been an in, investor kind of thing. When I was in, in high school, my dad, uh, you know, got me, um, you know, he, he never invested, but he's, you know, I once asked him a question about some stocks and, you know, there's, there's a page in the newspaper that had stocks on it. And, and, and I just learned about stocks. Right. And, and, and this was the early nineties. And I still remember this. Um, so I, I kind of kept asking my dad and he said, okay, let's go buy some stock. And, and then he did buy some stock. It was, it was when initially the, uh, you know, in, in, in India, the middle class had just found, uh, had discovered stock market investing. And, you know, uh, I kind of learned a bit and I, I helped him with it. And then I, I started getting some of my neighbors to, to help, uh, you know, I said, you know, I'll help up. Uh, I, you know, I, I used to get so involved in it. I knew the closing numbers of, of all the stocks in the Bombay Stock Exchange at one point. I knew that much level of detail. I used to read up on everything. So it, it was something that I learned at a very early age. So it was there. And then for a long time, when I started up the business and all that stuff, you know, complete honesty, I had no money to invest. Okay, so I had no money to invest. So, But come some time when I built a little bit, a friend came along and said, and he was my engineering school roommate and he had gone to INSEAD in, in, in Paris. And INSEAD is a very big angel network. Uh, so they have a very big, uh, so he's like, as part of the INSEAD angel network, here are some things that come to me. Are you interested? And I'm like, um, you know what? I don't really have much money, blah, blah, blah. And he said, okay, it's not much. And I said, okay. So that was the first one. Then through that network, I got a one or two more. And I said, okay, this is not too bad. And one of those first ones, um, we actually exited. So it was, it was good. I was like, okay, this is now not too bad. This, this sounds like, okay, so that's how that thing started off again. But, you know, at the back of my mind, you know, stock investment, you know, this is, you know, was always there. And, and, and this is something that I, and I'll tell you one, if you're, when I was in engineering school, and then if, if some of my classmates are out there, they will know this. I, you know, in, in, in engineering school in India, you, you had to pay fees, um, you know, in the, for every semester, like the first semester, six months, you got to pay a fees and you pay a fees in the second semester. So people got their fees for the first semester. And I found a loophole for only like a hundred Indian rupees. Okay. Which is nothing, which is like two Canadian dollars. That was the late fee. You could not pay the first semester and pay it all together in the second semester. And you paid a late fee of only a hundred rupees. I don't remember the exact amount, but very little. So I told them, hey guys, give me all your money, okay? And I took all their money and, and we invested it in stock. 
in 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 engineering school okay we invested in some ipos um and and uh, we actually made money so but this could have gone so horribly wrong that if 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 we didn't make money not only would all of us not be able to go to engineering school <laughs> So it was, but anyway, it was one of those. Could have ruined a few careers, but a uh, uh, few families would have been upset. It's a- absolutely awesome story. I I did something very similar. I took my student loans and uh, I did the same thing on the stock market. I played it for years and years and years, and I felt the only way for me to uh, put myself through school is I need to figure out ways to make quick money. So. I stayed up 24 hours a day, and all I did was scurry the internet, figure out where I could invest everything, and uh, it worked out quite well. There's a lot longer story to that, but I, I love what you did. It's uh, it's fantastic. It's innovative and very entrepreneur. Um, all right, uh, what's your favorite part of investing? I think the favorite part of investing is is when I see the smiles on on the entrepreneurs' faces, right? I, I when I see, you know, one is sometimes you know. And, and, and the biggest one is when the checks come in, when the money comes in, right? And, and I'm very old school. I'm like, did the money come in? I'm very cash flow oriented. I'm like, did the money come in? You know, run it by cash flow. You know, so when that, you know, when a big check comes in, when you see the smile on the, the entrepreneur's faces, that's golden. That, that's, that's, I think, really out there. I mean, and it's not... And this is real money. This is money that the business earns. It's not investment money. And this is the part where I take, I have a big problem with people really, uh, you know, congratulating each other. Oh, you raised more money. I'm like, that's bullshit that you raised money. That you, that is more equity. That's more debt. That's more thing that you owe somebody something for, right? You shouldn't be happy about that. You should be happy when your customer pays you money. That is, that is, in my opinion, in my book, that is the happiest moment for a business. And, and that's what really brings joy to me. And, you know, I think it should bring joy to any business. I love it. Uh, how many companies do you invest in per year? Um, maybe two or three at the most. Okay. Uh, do you take board seats? I do take board seats um, on some of them. The bigger where the investments are, uh, uh, where we have... Maybe, you know, uh, some of them we, we do put in a board seat clause, but I still don't take it. Uh, but there's a board seat clause in our, in our, in our, you know, investment. But if it goes about 25%, you know, and, and some of them we do take a higher stake. Yep. If it goes to more than 25%, we do take a board seat. Okay. Uh, do you have any preferred terms that you like when you're making investment, like um, common shares, equity, Prep shares, uh, anything in uh, safes? Okay, as I as I when I started off, it I told you we we're 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 done this very old school without really doing a lot of homework. Yes. If I were to do this again, I probably do a lot of preferred shares. Yeah. Uh, right now we have a lot of common equity, uh, okay. which which you know, for what if a term I didn't know better. Okay, I did not know better. Okay, so I I'm going to say this out there. I did not know better. Hey, that's okay. You learn as you go. So there's yes. nothing wrong with that. Yes. Uh, do you lead any rounds? Uh, again, good. You know, lead any rounds. Again, I only learned that. You know, what does lead any round really mean? Okay. Um, you know, again, we're we're amateur turned turned. We're trying to turn professional on this. So we're learning some of the terms. Okay. And, and I had to actually ask this. Uh, you know, maybe it was like six months back. Somebody said, "Do you lead any round?" And I'm like what do you mean? Like, you know, so I had to get to the bottom of it. So I, I, I have not figured it out. We have not led any round until now, but you know, when I look at what people do, uh, have we, do we have the smarts to lead around? Do we invest enough money in terms of uh, the, the size? Yes, we, we can lead around, but we've never done it. But now that I've learned what lead around means, um, and, and, and is there any benefit for us to lead a Brown? I'm still not convinced about that. Maybe I've got to have some, a little more chat with you to understand that. But, you know, if there is some benefit to leading around, maybe, why not? You know, I, we're not, we're not, we're not, uh, you know, I am not, you know, um, you know, against something that we can do it. And if you're really convinced and we can get more people to come along, why not? Some of these we're doing as a sole, as a sole investor. Many of these we're the sole investor. I love it. No, that's good. And I love the fact that you're learning as you go. And uh, 
it, it, it proves it that uh, you're a man of conviction. You're driven. You're going to make it happen, and you're going to learn it and make, keep making investments. So I love it. Um, last question is uh, on the investment side, is there any preferred piece when you're making an investment that you really want to make sure that's there? If it's the team, it's the paperwork, what things really lock in the deal for you? One is the business itself, right? We want to make sure there's two parts to this. One is, is the business in the right, in the right segment, right? You know, is it a growth area? Is this something that we believe in, number one, right? And second is the team or, or you know, what it could be they're saying at the same level. The team is important, but the business is important as well. You've got a great team. Um, you know, they can't really push things uphill. You know, are they, are they you know, headwinds? Are they tailwinds? you know, in the business. So we're looking for places where there's tailwinds. Um, right now, we're, you know, as I said, some of the businesses that we've invested in have been, you know, lower risk, lower growth, you know, I mean, and high growth, possibly high growth, but not rocket ship growth. Okay, so so there is, again, there's multiple nuances to growth. Um, you, know, uh, you know, are we looking at, uh, you know, high double digit growth? Yes. But are we looking at triple and quadruple digit growth? No, right? Those, those require a different kind of skills, right? Are we, are we investing in the next Facebook? No, we're not investing in the next Facebook, right? We don't have the skills for that. Now, if somebody does come in and somebody is leading around and we need to put some money, you know what? It's one of those things that we will, it's entirely risk. It's like investing in, you know, taking a big risk. It's like buying a lottery ticket. We would do it once in a while. But is that our business? It's not. We would, we would, we would put in the money, but we don't know enough about it. Okay. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Those are all great answers. Uh, so we're going to kind of shift into one kind of exciting, and, and I know you've got a great story on this. Um, and then we've got a couple of personal questions before we wrap up. So uh, the big question for you is we like to look for, and we love hearing kind of those emotional, real winner stories. Once where you were working with a startup and they just weren't making it happen or they were on the verge of failing and then they just pivoted and they crushed it. Um, or they didn't, uh, you know, we, we like stories that just kind of really draw you in and make you really understand what's going on. Is there uh, do you have one of those stories where, you know, you just couldn't believe it, but the entrepreneur just pulled one out of the hat and made it go awesome. Yeah. I think there's, there's, there's a couple of those. One is, I think um, uh, we've we'll, we'll invested in a company that's, um, in, in India's largest uh, uh, um, pet dog, uh, um, you know, dog uh, food and, and and everything related to pets, uh, you know, marketplace. Um, it's it's the largest marketplace in India. Um, they they kind of went down the whole burn route. Um, the you know the whole VC thing. They raised a lot of capital. They burnt a lot of capital, uh, and then. You know, the problem with that is at some point, somebody, then even your next round doesn't happen, you got to shut, right? There's nothing else. So they spent a lot of time to build something quite well. And, and then, um, you know, the founder wanted to actually quit. And, and I said, you know what? You built quite a bit. Now, can you look at this a little differently? So I had to have a, a conversation and say, can you look at it a little differently and look at it long term? Is this a business that can actually sustain itself, right? And all those guys that told you to go burn money, forget about them, right? What if somebody gave you new money and told you this can be run in a sustainable fashion? Would you be interested, right? Rather than go and be a, a, an employee somewhere else. And somebody was paying him good money to go and become an employee. So we, 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 we had a chat about it. Um, you know, he got one or two other ones. Hey, maybe this was one where we were a lead, now that you mentioned it, we were a lead in this one. Um, so we brought together a new set of people. They restructured the capital, and hey, they're a going concern now. They're 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 doing well. It's it's been um, you know a year two years now since um, it is it is um, you know you know turned around. Are they on a rocket ship? Maybe not. Are they growing? Yes. Um, are they having fun doing it? Yes. You know, as an investor, am I happy? Yes. So I think those are things that matter. And would we, am I, am I uh, confident that we will actually make our money on it? Yes. So I think these are the whole points that we should look at. And, and we're looking at it long-term, um, you, know, uh, you know, this is another aspect of this. 
today we don't have as many investors outside investors so we can be a little more patient but we're looking at raising some capital ourselves in our in our uh, venture capital business we're looking at uh, also possibly creating a fund so that will bring its own uh, you know uh, problems or its own you know you know it it own it own uh, set of you know pros and cons um but you know we will we'll, we'll, we'll approach them as we go along but we're looking basically looking for patient capital in that as well so you know stay tuned we have some announcements to make in the near future um you know tangential ventures as well as tangential ventures we're looking at uh, some um you know funds uh, that are going to invest in specific businesses i love it bj awesome uh we're going to pivot just into a couple quick questions um and these are uh, uh more of on the personal side so i've okay. taken to trying to learn a little bit more about uh the people that i get to spend time with so first question favorite sports team uh Favorite sports team? Uh, good question. Let me think. Um, uh, the the Packers. The Packers. All right. I, I was kind of expecting that because of your background being from India, that you might be a huge cricket fan. Yeah, cricket as well, but Packers. I, I have reasons for the Packers. I, I. It's one of those only teams where anybody can become a shareholder. So you know, you know, you 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 could you could buy a sh- a, a share in the in the Packers, you know. So you you really could could uh, you know become um, you know and 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 you know they had a good story. So yeah. you know, I, I kind of got you know. But again, I'm not a big big you know. I don't follow. I, if you tell me, ask me for scores and stuff, I don't know any of that. Okay, uh, you know. So I like the story. I, yeah. I do follow them a little bit, but not 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 too much. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, your favorite movie, and what character would you play in the movie? Forrest Gump. All right. I, I would play Forrest Gump. Yeah. You play Forrest Gump. All right. Again, I'll tell you why. All right. Serendipity. Serendipity. I love Forrest Gump for serendipity. You go where the light, where the world takes you. You 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 let things happen around you, and in most cases, it happens for the best. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm a, I've got a lot of movies to catch up on and watch, but I find that it really does, uh, the characters really do play and people do match themselves up quite well to the character they pick in a movie. So uh, I'm glad that we got to, to connect and chat, BJ. I learned a lot, took lots of notes as I always do. And uh, I appreciate all your time, your energy and all the great things you shared. I love the philosophy and I love the theory that you're using and you're going after the hypothesis on how you're making investments, how you grew your own business. Uh, keep it up. It's brilliant. Uh, we are going to chat again because I think there's lots of stuff that not only do we have in common, but uh, the same direction and goals and where you're headed. So uh, we will connect there. But just like we do in, in fashion of our podcast that Ask an Angel, I want to leave the last comment to you. So anything you want to share to entrepreneurs or to investors, uh, the floor is yours. And thank you again for all your time today. Thank you, Jeffrey. And, um, you know, I think if you're if you're an if you want to be an entrepreneur want to do it my thing is follow the nike slogan just do it just go and do it and make it happen don't think about it too much just do it okay on that it. note uh, jeffrey thank you again you bet thank you very much vj i will be in touch thank you bye oh that was awesome um lots of great stories i i like the end with uh, just do it from the nike symbol uh for the entrepreneur and he's right you know you, you've got to put together a, a long-term strategy and if money's going to help you grow and propel then that's where you're going to take it and move but sometimes you got to figure out is how can I do this uh and grow this business myself and understand where I sit and where I'm going and then from there decide on those uh next strategic steps that can help you grow your business it's a little bit outside the angel vc model but at the end of the day it grows sustainability and it grows your business so uh cash flow driven i love that uh but great conversation and he's doing a lot of great things in uh the entrepreneur world and building his own business so uh thank you very much again vj and uh everybody have a fantastic day